Hello, Joey Gates here. Crowquill66 is the channel, and I wanted to let you guys on the inside of something that I'm working with. Hopefully, what I'm doing might be interesting to you. You might could try a few things, you know, give me a few comments, helpful hints, that sort of thing. And if I can help you, that's that's awesome too. So here's a rough animation plan that I did, and uh, let me just go ahead and play that. So the character has a gold rock. He looks and says, oh, there's a bigger gold rock. He rolls it, picks it up, and then he walks off with it. So it's really rough, but it's, uh, it's enough to kind of get me situated and started in this particular scene. And the reason I wanted to do a test of this is I am building a new character for this, and I wanted something to test my character with. So um, here is the character. Turn off that movie clip. Let me do a, a quick play of what I've got on him so far. Oh, there's a bigger rock. I'm going to throw that rock. Right. So I'm still working on the throw. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing here. Let's get a rendering of him so we can see what it looks like. Everything about this guy is simple. And um, I, because I, did, I like to do the point level animation where you you move points and key those points as opposed to uh, moving bones and keying the bones um, just because I think the bones are limiting Excuse me. <coughs> in Anime Studio right now. They, they work great for some things but for other things um, they don't and um, if, if I could build a rig where it's more of a true IK rig where the feet stay flat on the ground while I rotate the hips or while I turn the top torso or something like that then um, I think I would use more bones as well as points but since I can't get that to work the way that I want it to um, I'm trying to figure out a way to simplify my characters but still make them look awesome so let me explain to you a little closer let's get a little closer on this guy I can walk through the rig and uh, show you why he is set up a little differently. So here he is. I have basically four groups right now. I have one for the head, and inside the head I uh, have basically everything. Let's rotate that so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to rotate the group so you can see where I have the center point. So I have that group, and then I have this arm group. Hello. And then we have a body, which technically this guy should be keyed down here because it's more often than not, um, it's better to have, if I'm doing any stretching and squashing or anything like that, it's better to have that going against the floor because that's where gravity goes. It pushes you down. So in that case, what I would be doing is something like that. And then we have the other arm that rotates like that. So inside the arms, I have um, a single shape here. And what's different about these arms is I'm using a stroke for the arms. I thought, hmm, let's try that and see how that works. Instead of having multiple points on either side of a shape, let's see how it is if I can just keep this shape. And this shape comes down, this stroke comes down, and then I've merged these points, connected them, I mean, uh, to the end to create this hand. So I have a thumb, you know, right here. And, um, and then I have these layers, um, these effects. Fill shape, fake. Uh, either I'm using a fill shape effect or I'm using a layer effect whichever one seems like it's working best. Um, same thing with the face. Get a little closer you can see I have the teeth here, but I also have a shadow on the inside that's helping to, to define that shape. It's not an extra object, it's just a, a, a little gradient, a little glow. I, I think that's a, in, uh, like an inner glow that's dark. 
Okay, so I wanted to let me now show you a little bit about how to animate a rig like this without using bones. And this same philosophy carries throughout just about all the different animation that you would see this character do. So the philosophy is the same. First, you manipulate what you can with the um, with the group. And then you can manipulate the points. So let's try this. So let's move this arm. Even though currently he's not set up to do much. Let's take off these keys. Let's try on something else there. So right now, the movement that you see is happening there is because of this group. So this arm kind of wiggling like that, that little movement that it has, is because of it's animating that group. So let's say he wants to have this arm in hand come up here in front of this shirt. His elbow is going to bend and he's going to move that arm. So the way, we, the way I would do that is I would first start with the group itself. I think he would do it. If he were to do something like that, he would do it right about here. So make it part of this movement that he's got going on. So here I'm going to rotate the group, the sleeve, right? And I'm also then going to come back here because it looks like I need to position it. I'm going to create a key here because I, I don't want to lose the position of this. So it's going to rotate, but I'm going to reposition the sleeve to something that fits, right? Okay. Now, that's about what I want to do with the sleeve, but obviously his arm isn't going to come up far enough. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take this key off because we don't want him to do that. So let's bend the arm now. So we, we already have this movement. I can take these keys and pull them out and it's just going to be slower. Right? So I know I know what this movement is going to do. So now let's get in, put my key, my, uh, my little ticker guy there and get into the arm. Now let's rotate or reposition this guy. So I can move him like this since he's a single stroke. I can move him. I can rotate him. Let's start with rotating. Okay. I'm going to rotate the arm so that it's like that. Now you can see that I didn't want to do it right there. Let's go back to the arm. I actually want this pose to be on this frame. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to move it out here. And then I'm going to go to the first frame here, since there hasn't been any keys at all set. And then I'm going to touch this. It's going to create a key. I'm going to copy that and put it out right about here. So I know that this guy is going to stay pretty much the same place. And now it bends up like that. Now if I don't want that to go quite as far, you know, his body is positioned so that his arm is that long. If I make it any shorter, it's going to look strange unless I want to give some kind of foreshortening effect. So I'm going to come back to my total arm and I'm going to pull that back a little bit so that it's a better pose like that. And then I'm also going to position this guy up right here. So now we have this animation that happens. Now I'm going to want to play with that obviously because that's a linear, a linear thing. It's just going from point A to point B. And bodies, people don't move that way. They move organically. There needs to be an arc. And instead of a straight line between here and here, that hand needs to swing in an arc. Okay, so I played with it a little bit more. And this is what I have so far. You can see that that pops. I can move that out if I need to. 
play it in real time. Got a weird thing going on with the elbow that I need to address. Kind of jumps, doesn't it? Although I like it better if it's quick like that when it first takes off. I think that's that's more natural. Now let's adjust the total arm itself to give a little bit more follow through and a little bit more anticipation. So we have some anticipation with that hand. We kind of know that it's going to be moving up. Why? Because the arm is starting to move up and the hand is starting to drag. So that's basically letting the viewer know that there's a movement here that's going to be happening. It shouldn't surprise people that he's going to move his arm because they know. If I wanted to add a little bit more anticipation, I can do it to the group, like here. So let's say I rotate this guy back a little bit here on the rotation. So that gives a little bit more warning, right? If I wanted to, I can rotate it quite a bit. I already have the hand movement in there. So can you see kind of how this would be a, a useful thing to animate characters with a uh, process? But don't let me um, think you that it's easy, because it's not. It's uh, I don't want to lead you down that direction. It's if you like, if you really enjoy animation to the point where you love detail and you love manipulating details and polishing then this is a, a really fun thing for animators to use and to, and to do. If you just want to tell a story with as few, few frames and as poses as possible, then this isn't, you won't be interested in this at all. So, we're going to take this guy and add a little bit more overlap or follow through here actually and I'm going to rotate this guy like this and then I'm going to set all it back down because nothing comes to a complete stop ever it moves to a point and then there's always some kind of physical reason why it should continue or settle you just don't want it to be noticeable if it's noticeable then um, it becomes distracting and you don't want you don't want it to be distracting you want to tell a story so I don't really like the way that happens that does that I need to delete it there we go I think I'm going to do this with the arm position this like this. Oops. So it's like la it's I'm layering animation is what I'm doing. It's layered style animation. I have an arm movement which is and I can go into the fingers as well and do finger movements but I can also animate the layer um, and then I can also animate the group.